I'm Mr. Sam. I'm the leader of the band. I'm the manager, the producer, the tour manager, pick an agent, do all the merch stuff, the groupie, the drummer, pretty much do everything. All right, I'm Big Nut. I'm a lead singer for Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts. I am, I'm Nona and I'm a recent addition. I play bass in Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts. My name is Nut Allergy and I play the guitar in Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts. It's not very comfortable, is it? <laughs> Hi, I'm Cardboard Nut uh, and I'm a member of the Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts. Oh, all right, sorry. I don't actually know my name, but they call me Little Nut. So we had a bowl of blood and we all had to put a pinky in. It's a mixture of all our blood and Mr. Sam put his in last. And then out of that, he paints a little line on our forehead and how it dries, where he can see words. I had the smallest trail on my forehead, so little nut it was. There's nothing to do with um, me being little. It's, it's all to do with the blood trail on the forehead, like I said. That's what he tells me. That's what he tells me. What, you, you suggest I'm small? No, no, no. You, you're saying I'm small? Well, I've got a lot of, I've got like big arms. I'm not small. I just want to make that clear, I'm not small. I'm not small, am I, Mr. Sam? Are we done here? Honestly, I've got places to be. Like, big, normal-sized places to go. So I first saw the Dead Nuts in some crappy little, like, little pub way back ago. There's just the four guys. There's, uh, I think back then they went by Greg, Jeremy, Kyle, and Rodrigo. Um, and it was nonsense. They didn't have a drummer. They were completely out of time. It was just the two guitars. Uh, big Nut was playing, still playing bass back then, and the keys. So I saw these guys, and they were awful. The crowd, they seemed to love it, all four of them. They were really into it. I saw there was, they had potential, there was something there. I knew these guys were gonna make me big. We were brilliant, we really were. We were playing to packed out half-filled pubs everywhere, across the town. And one day, Mr. Sam comes walking in, he had this sparkly waistcoat on, he still wears it to this very day. I've never seen him take it off, I don't know if he can. But anyway, he came in and he said, you guys, you guys are gonna be big. I'm gonna be your drummer. And we're like, we don't really need a drummer. We're do he's and somehow I can't remember anything since then. And here we are. Mr. Sam, what do they all do? Uh, they're, they're... Is this how you drive your spaceship? Yeah. It's... Yes, the spaceship. Yeah. So I took them under, renamed the brand. Uh, I take 99% of the cut because it's, it's my name on it. It's Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts. It's not just the Dead Nuts. It's not Big Nut and the Dead Nuts. It's Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts. The band name before Dead Nuts it was Mr. Sam's Dream Emporium. Mr. Sam's Dream Emporium. Yeah, and he, yeah. it was the spaceship. This was the spaceship from the Dream Emporium. Why didn't we go with that in the end? Don't know. You tell me. You tell me. I told them, like, I can get you on MTV, I can get you playing the O2. Like, and they just sort of really responded to that. And I mean, we haven't done any of these things yet, but we will do. What's that loud squealing? Oh, oh God! Oh, it's loud. It stops. It stopped. Dead end. It's way easier if you get in on the ground level. Find the bands while they're small. It's much harder to sign them when they're big. Like, you know the Killers? They released that Mr. Brightside song. I tried ringing them up after that came out. They wouldn't listen. They wouldn't let me sign them. Small bands, it's way easier. Sign loads of them. Well, I think they're already signed. That's probably why. Oh, uh, well. I mean, they should make that more obvious. It's not really very clear. So I, I struggle with the band to begin with. Like I'm a bit nervous with groups of people and there's six of us, I think. And, but Mr. Sam, he took me under his wing. He actually has an angel wing uh, made out of feathers and he took me under it and I felt calm and nurtured. Um, but it was really big nut. Uh, honestly, we got, well, let's, actually what's my biggest finger? Cause our bond is the strongest. What are my thoughts on little nut? Which one's he? He's got a guitar. Yes. That narrows it down. But I like one of the ones with the guitar. One of the other ones with the guitar, not so much. But if I'm honest with you, I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't tell them apart. I, as I say, my irises are totally gone. I look out. It's it's a it's a lifetime of touring, and looking out on stage lights. Right? They come in and they just. I love looking into them. I'm like a moth to a flame. Some people say they call me Mothman. Some that was the old band. Um, there was there was me. Mothman, we had Godzilla, and we had um, 
something else you look like a, a pterodactyl well, i know everything about big nut i know he, uh, he has like five hour sleeping schedule wakes up at 7 a.m he's often hung over so he wears the the shades i like his shades he looks really good in them oh uh, his beard's nice too big nut all right you ready for the Ready for the session today? Ready for rehearsal? Yeah, no, I would like to get to know Little Nut better. Uh, he, he invited me around his house the other night for a nice meal. I went round, I was like, you know, you got to build some bonds within the band. Did you, you could get, you could make dinner? You could make dinner? Hold it's on. all right, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. You know, just let me know if, if, you, if you're available or, it doesn't matter, you don't have to be available, but. Went to the wrong house, ended up having dinner with a Chinese family, lovely people. But by the end of it, they were more confused than I was. Sorry, which one are you? Oh, uh, Little Nut, Little Nut. Oh, Little Nut, all right, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, just yeah. looking at the set list. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, li I like looking too. Yeah. I like looking. See, see you later. I got salmonella at his once. It's fine. Fuck really, off. Really cool. Oh. You know, sometimes we fight. But it's because of love. Like, I, I love him. Uh, the thing about Big Nut is he's always, despite his rock and roll lifestyle, he's always been very professional. And that's, we kind of see eye to eye on that. He knows if he doesn't turn up, he's just not going to make it. Big Nut is barely present at best of times, but he sings a good song. I appreciate his talent. He's a good man. Get that thing out of my face. You know how I feel. Sometimes I won't see Big Nut for, for months. He'll go on various expeditions, and then he'll come back stinking of high hell, and quite frankly, we get nothing done for a long time. But when he is back, he's excellent, he's great, um, but then the drugs kick in, and the drugs are something else. Yeah, no, I was pretty, yeah, pretty blackout drunk. I mean, why do you think I'm wearing the sunglasses? I, I've actually blown out both of my irises. They're, they're gone, they're shot. They look a little bit like an empty swimming pool filled with blood. Hello? Well, sometimes drugs do help, right? Yeah, definitely. Although, to be honest with you, the problem is you come up with all these great ideas, but your bloody short-term memory is so short whilst you're blazed out of your mind, you just can't write them down in time. I'm a slow writer at the best of times, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I've got more chance of you know pissing lyrics down on the paper than writing them, because I piss pretty quickly. I've got quite a strong flow, like a fire hydrant if you will. Uh, well, it could have been some help at Grenfell, that's for sure. Honestly, he could, he could do some real damage with that. I'm sure he'll be called up by the government to uh, get rid of some riot rioters at some point, I'm sure. You're right there, big nut. All right, mate. Do you get altitude sickness up there? Yeah, I do frequently, actually. Yeah. Mm. It's a real pro problem. I've oh. got a doctor, band doctor, in it? He's band. band. Doctor. I, don't, I don't get the doctor. No, you don't. Mr. Sam wouldn't let me. He wouldn't. Oh, of course I look down on the average person. I'm usually bloody taller than them, you know? Can't help it. It's something that's been instilled in me from an early age. I came out six foot, slid out of that thing like I was at a fucking water park. You Jesus. came out as six foot as, yeah. a, as a baby. Yeah, came out six foot, but with the weight of a baby. So yeah. I was very thin and tall, very thin. <laughs> well, originally they thought I was a tapeworm. Um, it just kept coming, you know, like a fucking rope trick. Some people might know me from the fact that I was the worm boy from 1988, but I like to say that I'm creating a new name for myself. Used to be Moss Man, was Worm Boy. Now, Big Nut. I spoke to a shaman in South America, Big Nut put me onto him, and uh, honestly I took a wild trip down there and he told me about alternate universes. And this was a, this was a tough pill to swallow, but it turns out there's an unlimited amount of Big Nuts out there, all different variants, and most of them have died. Like this is the only one where he actually survives all those cataclysmic events, like one Spanish flu, truck, little kid, tore out his eyes. Uh, it scares me, like, if this, this could be, you know, this version of him that dies. But I'm going to make the most of him. What was the question? Uh, little Nut, man, he's, he's passionate. I mean, he's, you should see him, like, whenever we practice, he just sits in a corner. He sits in a fucking corner and just meditates the whole time. It's weird. I take a lot of inspiration from Buddhism. Um, I do sit down a lot, so that's the first step, isn't it? They do a lot of sitting down elbows on the knees sort of stuff. Even if you go near him, he just fucking goes mental. Well, obviously, if someone disrupts my meditation, I get fucking leery, so you can't disrupt the Zen, because that's unbalanced at that point. Honestly, it took me a long time to sit down, so I've got very small thigh muscles. 
So it pisses me off when someone just interrupts, like it took me fucking 20 minutes to sit down. You don't understand, I'm trying to be a Buddha at the moment. So the name Cardboard Knight is an obscure um, reference to, uh, so when I first, when I, when I met Sam, Mr. Sam for the second time, I was wearing this rather luxurious cardboard outfit, which, it doesn't sound luxurious, but it was painted in this shimmery gold paint. Now, it looked a little bit like I was some sort of uh, samurai, and I'd argue that that was the look I was going for. Now, Cardboard Nut, now, uh, he, he said he, it had to be nuts because we were calling ourselves the dead nuts. And then he said he really liked the cardboard and I think it kind of just stuck from there. It's, it's not that glamorous. Um, the funny thing is I, I became quite allergic to actually touching cardboard um, not long after that, which kind of makes the name almost insulting and if anything, I'd prefer to be called uh, CB Nut for short. It's also easier to write down. Well, looking at my influences, I'd say you've got to say Dolly Parton. Straight away, Dolly Parton's in there, definitely. Uh, you've got the Cheeky Girls, uh, Busted. Oh no, wait, no, he, the runner-up was Will Young. I'm thinking about Gareth Gates, definitely in there for me. There's something about the way that he, you know, got the words out. I actually went into a, a good couple of years of a deep depression about Gareth Gates, actually. And then there was a rehab, um, obviously. The rehab was weird. We did it down in South America. Um, and it involved a lot of strange drinks. There's a shaman there. And the shaman, he said to me, something very, something very interesting. He said, look at me, big nut. You used to be a moth man. Now you're a large man who goes by the name of Big Nut. And I said, yes. And he said, go. Didn't he die? The shaman? Yeah, he was Gareth. whacked up. Huh? Gareth, didn't he die? No, you're thinking of... Um, Gately. Uh, Gately, Stephen Gately. Um, member of uh, Westlife, I believe. Um, he died on holiday, um, suspected drug overdose, I think. Something to do with all the, the party drugs he was taking, but I, I don't blame him. I mean, have you tried the party drugs? I mean, there's a reason they call them party drugs, you know? It's not misery drugs, is it? It's party drugs, and everyone likes a party. Even kids. Kids love parties, birthday parties. Taste some music, well, what do you mean by that? I'm confused by that, taste. We don't taste music, do you? It doesn't have a flavor, well, it's a bit metallic. I guess. I'll let my guitar now and again. Well, actually, the nature of the band is very classic rock. Now, I'm okay with that, but sometimes you need to add a little spin on it. In this modern era, we require digital sounds to make uh, an impact with music, and so I feel like, why not now with this band? You know, it's exciting, it's new, it's, it's very much like dubstep. To be honest, I don't really know what Cardboard Knot does. Um, I see the other two of their guitars and they got strings and that makes sense, but he's got this plastic thing. I'm actually classically trained in the guitar. Essentially it's a, it's, it's a keyboard, someone's stuck an arm on it, and I raise it up here and I play it like a guitar. Carpool nut, why don't you, uh, you right there? Here it is, this is the beast. Uh, this is, uh, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful machine. Here we go, look, you've got these little dials here. That'll uh, give you some extra. What do they do? It's... Gives you a bit more sound. Oh, more sound, yeah, right. Yeah, so when, when you think, Oh, I really want more sound. You're right. Push this one up. Well, I don't hear anything at the moment. No, 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 not right now. I mean, yeah, he's not here for his musical talent. He's here for the sound. That's all it is. Unfortunately, I had an incident in 2005 where I completely forgot everything I learned. And I'm very furious about it. I'm still currently doing a uh, tribunal with them. It's, what, it's my favorite instrument. It looks good. I can rock out. Um, it's, it's quite simple to re-remember, which is the important part, because I, compl I honestly I completely forgot everything. Um, so being classically trained over seven years, waste of time. As much as we're a classic rock band, we want to try and bring in some new trends. And you see all these like this dubstep nowadays, they've all got these synth things in them. So we just need to bring that in. It's going to help us appeal to a new audience. And that's, that's kind of where the money is. So I've always wanted to play guitar and I never learn to this day. I learned three chords off the internet and I, I learnt those chords, and that's all we use in the band now. Not allergy. Look, look at this guy, look, his fingers. Have you seen these? Have you seen them? I can't even keep up. To this day, the guys haven't figured out that I have no idea what I'm doing on guitar. I have to play every single day, otherwise the arthritis kicks in. Uh, you've got to keep them supple. Uh, 
guitar is really important. Uh, I like to play as many notes as fast as possible. Doesn't really matter what order they're in, but the faster you play, the more of a blur it becomes. Uh, it's wild. Uh, so yeah, I practice a lot. Not our songs though. Mr. Sam won't let us. He's got copyright. You want to see? You want to see the rig? They want to see the rig. Oh, being filmed. Rig. Hello. This is a uh, sacred ground, so uh, wipe your feet afterwards. This is the. Uh, this is my base. I call it the apocalypse because the the end's coming in it. Anyway, uh, this has got six strings on it. That's my setup. Uh, this is the biggest string, and then that's uh, the thinnest one there. This is the thinnest one. How do you add more sound? Uh, you've got these knobs. Not too is that, much. Is that, is that good? That's enough. Is it good for that's you? That's enough. Is it good for you? That's enough. You got this whammy bar. No, no, he doesn't have one of them because he's uh, he's an idiot. He doesn't know how to play his guitar. But anyway, uh, have a look at these. Oh, you almost touched the drums. Oh shit! They've got these little slammers. Uh, so this one, uh, that one uh, just has like some letters on it. I don't know what that means. B. I guess that's like a gra like GCSE grading. These Fark ones. knows what they do these otherwise. Ones. That's beautiful. That's fantastic. But nut allergy. Honestly, his rig's pretty shit. So don't look at it. I concur. Yeah, my rig's pretty shit. Got this guitar. So these down here, these are pedals. Uh, to be honest with you, I have absolutely no idea what they're for, but I did look over there a couple of weeks ago and I saw that little nut has got some pedals as well. And I couldn't let him have more stuff than me. So I got some pedals in. Uh, it's best not to even touch it really, because when it's working, you don't really want to ruin it. To be honest, Mr. Sam sets it all up for me. I don't know, I just come and pick this up. Give it, I mean, it's not working right now. Mr. Sam? Uh, yeah, there is another guitarist in the band. Uh, I often forget he's there. Uh, he's just so like mediocre. Obviously you need some rhythm guitar to go in now and again. Uh, he keeps increasing his hair length to try and stand out in the crowd, obviously because his guitar playing is so mediocre. But um, he's all right, I guess for someone with, you know, he's not very bright. We've all got our little roles to do. You've got, you've, you know, you've got cardboard nut on his, his like piano, but he holds it like this. I don't really know what that thing is. You've got, you got no nuts on the thing that's similar to mine, but not quite the same number of things that go horizontally. Uh, Mr. Sam, strings. of course. The strings. If you say so, they're strings, then that's what they are. Mr. Sam's doing his bit, you know, and then Big Nut, he's, you know, the powerful front man, you know, he's, he's, kind of channeling this energy of Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts and, you know, screaming it down this, this microphone thing that makes it even louder, which he doesn't really need because he's loud enough. But then I look across, there's this other guy, you know, normally to my right, sometimes to my left. And it, Little Nut, that's his name. And he plays the same thing as me. Sometimes his fingers are doing the same thing as me, so I can't help but feel like there's a bit of competition there, you know? Like, to be the better one. But I can only play three of the things that he's playing, and he's doing all this twiddly bit, and I don't know how to keep up. But you know what I do then? I just slick my hair back and do a little head bang, and everyone suddenly, all the eyes are on me again, because this massive hair's going crazy. And they can't hear what he's doing. They can't hear, I don't know what he's doing. But it doesn't matter. Guitar playing isn't about playing the guitar. It's about looking good while you're doing it. Obviously you got the, you got the two guys, right? They're, they're doing their thing. They're making all the noises. They're making their guitars make these ungodly screamy noises. It's, it's mad. They've got all these pedals everywhere. It's such a mess. I don't know how they operate. It's just shit everywhere. I'm a simple setup. You just one thing, give me an amp, give me cable, you're good to go. I think we could cut down a solo for a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I, think, 
I think little Nat could like keep up a little bit. He's a bit like lagging behind. Free your solo down to like one or two notes. That's it. That's all we need. I think it's perfect. It conveys the emotion of the gang there. Again, I'd love I'd love to hear my own music back, but because Mr. Sam's got such a clamp down on the the copyrights of things, we're only really allowed to listen to the music in his presence. And even then, is in a glass case. He's got a very special vinyl player for it. You see, carbon fiber and all that stuff. And we actually have to plug our ears so only Mr. Sam can really hear the authentic. So I don't know what the fuck's going on when we're practicing, but uh, I'm sure we look good. I think if you look back through music history, you think of all the big bands, you think of like Queen, you think of Led Zeppelin, it's all classic rock. That's where the money is, and that's why we're doing classic rock. Is that, is that the kind of music we play, classic rock? It's not too late to play classic rock, I'm sure. If Mr. Sam thinks that's the best way to go, then that's the way we, we do it. Like I say, I've never heard what we've played. I'm not allowed to unless I have to buy it. And I don't want to buy it because unfortunately, Mr. Sam doesn't think we should get paid for what we do. It's just, you know, he provides us accommodation and the occasional meal. And that's, I guess, the rock and roll lifestyle, really, isn't it? Like, you, you've, 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 got to, you've got to take it or leave it, you know? That's, uh, that's what it means to be a rock star. But for most people, it's kind of an easy listening for the hard of hearing, if you will. Um, so I think if you, if you can't hear it very well, it's perfect for you. If you look back in history, music goes in cycles, and we might not be at the peak of the uh, classic rock cycle right now, but it's going to come back around. If we keep playing for long enough, it'll definitely come back around, and that's when we're going to make our money. The fans are the best fans you could ask for. They're very loving and caring to each other, and they accept the band for who they are. Yeah, you know, we got, we got the best fans in the world. They love it. They come to every gig. They're there like, oh, sign my chest. I'm like, I can't write for shit anymore. You know, the hands are gone. Oh, so, oh, it's all up here, isn't it? As a singer, can't use my hands. If you don't use your hands for a while, you just lose the use of them. It's not like a bike, you know? You forget. Oh, these are useless now. Absolutely useless. Now, some, some would envy a, a rock and roll star, and I, I, I sometimes envy my fellow colleagues. And that's mainly because of the pure uh, savagery. Allegations in the papers. What have I done? I don't know what I did. I didn't do it. Like, he attacked me, is what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, he came at me from a high angle, and obviously that's out of my periphery. So, yes, I was scared, and I was on the defensive. I didn't know he was a doctor, all right? I didn't know that. I was a bit drunk. I was a little bit drunk and I didn't realise that it was my doctor's appointment. I blacked out, briefly, and then he was on me with a stethoscope. Fucker. I hope he's recovering well. You go from venue to venue, you know, bed to bed, lover to lover, drug to drug, glass to glass. There's cocaine everywhere, it's fucking great. I mean, we're rock stars, it's what we fucking do. And they expect us to be all, la -de -da, la -de -da, but fold the bed sheets when you're done. Fuck that noise. Well, I mean, yeah, I do smash hotel rooms up. And I think, you know, I'm reaching the criteria of rock star status, but no one's coming up to me on the streets and saying, oh, yeah, little nut, I know you from somewhere. And yeah, it's, it's often the doctor thing because I, I'm in the newspapers, aren't I? It's not for my musicianship and my guitar playing. It's because I kicked the head of a doctor. We, we save most of the action for Tuesday nights purely because of some bizarre fascination or fetish, if you will, that Mr. Sam has for Tuesdays. We'll, we'll, we'll go out and we'll get shit-faced. Um, we'll, we'll snort every th little thing in the, in the bloody place. And it's, it's absolutely fine, but until you wake up the next morning and you have to reassess life in many different ways. I like to sit down with a book, um, maybe watch a nice film, uh, and then piss on my fans.
So nut allergy came about because Mr. Sam just told me that I have a nut allergy. And it's weird because I seem to remember that I used to eat nuts, but he tells me that I can't eat nuts and that I shouldn't eat nuts and that my name is nut allergy. So I don't eat nuts anymore and I call myself nut allergy just so I remember. Don't eat nuts because you have a nut allergy. Ugh. Yeah, I feel I'm real strong today. They're fresh to me completely new. I'm joining, obviously I'm joining this from an outside perspective. Uh, I was in a Susie Quattro tribute band for a while. So No Nuts was a late addition to the band, obviously when we figured out that Big Nut maybe couldn't play bass and sing at the same time and that's fine, like he's still... I mean, obviously the lack of using my hands now, that kind of impacted the decision somewhat. And you know, No Nuts is definitely a better bass player than me and I'm not too proud to admit that. What I am too proud to admit, however, is that I'm scared of Mr. Sam. I won't admit it. No matter how many times he tries to attack me, no matter how many times he uses gaffer tape to rip out the pubic hair on my butt crack, I will not submit. However, I will submit. Fuck are you saying? When you've got someone who's allergic to nuts, like me, nut allergy, the last thing you want is more nuts. And we have enough nuts on that stage. So when I heard the next nut was no nuts, I was like, yes, yeah, thank you, Mr. Sam. I've been on the scene for a really long time. Um, Big fan of Seal. I was actually at a house party when he wrote Kiss of the Christmas Rose. It was fucking crazy. Like we were all smashed off our faces and Gene Simmons fell into a rose bush. It's fucking great. And then Seal was just like, there's like a kiss from a rose. No, rehearsal was always very smooth. Um, I mean, we've got the songs nailed. So it's just kind of, we just turn up, sort of breeze through them, just, you know, just to refine them. But I mean, we've been doing this for years. We know exactly what we're doing. It's all calm. The songs are sounding perfect. We're just ready to go. Right guys, we need to fucking shape up. The tour starts really fucking soon and we haven't played a song all the way through in years. I played we... some White Snake and... No, one some... of our songs. Oh, right. right we sorry. get to like the first chorus and it all just falls apart. It's because I can't hear what I'm doing, Mr. Sam, if I'm honest with you. I mean, I understand the... But why the... not? The copyright thing. I don't want to hear excuses, guys. We need, really fucking need to shape up. He wants to hear music. He wants to hear music, don't you, Mr. Sam? <laughs> yeah, I want to hear our music all the way through for once. Not Queen, just to be. No, we're not doing fucking Queen again. Okay. Right. We lost so many weeks of practice to doing Bohemian Rhapsody. No, no, yeah. I, we I, didn't it, nail it. Though. It was because um, well, yeah, uh, he was doing it. it. He was he was doing it, not me. So it was yeah. Sorry about him. Get you another couple of strings, you could be just like him. Honestly, we don't need him. What? No, we don't. Look, look into no, it. You don't have to string. do that. A couple more. more, that's all I need. Two more. Uh, two, that's a, two fucking, more. that's a lot of strings. You've already, you do already two thirds of the way there. But mate, no. we only play these two. Oh. We do this every fucking rehearsal and it takes up so much time. Normally for rehearsals, they go, they go well. Yeah, the band always gets along. We're, we're like brothers and a sister. Have our moments, don't we? Like, crazy sometimes. Mad. Nuts, some might say. It's a little joke. We're together all the time and somehow we never fight. We're, we're like, we're just so close to each other all the time. There's no arguments ever. There's no fights, there's no aggression. All right, which one of you lost can eat my yogurts again? No, 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 it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I ate your fucking yogurt. It was me. It was me. I'm going to smack you, mate. What are you doing? I'm going to eat you first. Oh, I had Oh, I feel a lot better now. Don't worry about the yogurt. Got some more, got multi pack. Oh. You're right, pig nut. Yeah, I'm all right, mate. All right. I wouldn't consider myself a violent man, no. Quite a peaceful, sort of gentle giant, I guess. So a few of the others are pretty violent. You so, could... so you've punched a photographer once. Is that normal behaviour? I don't recall punching any photographers. Some days they can be pretty productive and they can be good, but then other days, man, like, oh my God, like nut allergy bought a spoon and then I don't even know why. And then all of a sudden everybody started screaming. 
Little nut. What? Stop looking at me while I'm doing my solo. I can't you concentrate. Look at me You're giving me the eye while I'm doing my solo. I can't concentrate you're while you're looking, looking at me while I'm doing my solo. You're so good to you. Oh, come on. Oh, he's got a spoon. He's got a spoon. Fights are a big problem. I mean, at some point, somebody is going to get quite seriously injured. At the moment, it's playful. But I'm thinking about bringing a weapon to practice now, I think. I think the others are thinking about it as well. And it's an arms race, ultimately, you know? You, you, one person brings a spoon, another person brings a knife, and before you know it, you're going at each other with bloody machetes. No, we've, we've never used weapons in the practice room. Someone might say something, someone might throw something. We brush it off pretty quickly uh, once there's blood. And honestly, it's the speed of that which is impressive because it really does ramp to 100 pretty quickly. Oh, the spoon is a sharp one! Let me Put it down! Spoon me! No, let, me. let me get oh. it! Let me get oh. it! Oh. Big nut! Oh. Like I say, we all get along. There's no reason to, to pry or wonder what's going on behind closed doors with Mr. Sam, especially when, when he gets a little bit annoyed, which doesn't ever happen. He's, he's always fine. He's fine with everything that we do. I might be a little strict, but it's definitely not aggressive. Like, it's important to command respect um, sort of like the same way you treat a dog. Sometimes you just have to, to give him a bit of a yank and pull him into line. He does beat the shit out of Little Nut though, and it is a little bit worrying. But he seems pretty resilient as an individual. And Sam just doesn't tire. That's the thing, he just doesn't tire. You can beat and beat and beat and beat and beat. God knows what happens when we elevate the weapons. Put a weapon in that man's hand, he'll slaughter a whole village, you know what I mean? Whole villages. We, we did an Africa tour a while back for Nightmare. Can't, can't go back to Rwanda, that's for sure. Mr. Sam, I know he just appears. Oh! <laughs> Fucking nailed that. The fuck oh, have I said oh, 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 They oh, oh, fucking oh. I don't think they fear me. Um, I think they respect me, and that's what it comes back down to at the end of the day. It's not about fear, it's about respect. And as long as those guys respect me, then they know where we're at. Well, yeah, if they, if they don't respect me, there's going to be a problem. I actually met Mr. Sam some while before he, he found us again later on as a band. Uh, he was face down in a mirror and it was, it was then I realised this man had something about him. Um, his eyes were extremely red and watery and honestly I, I couldn't see for the powder in the room if you know what I mean. And quite frankly he didn't seem very professional then, but the second time I met him he made a lot more sense. Uh, he was very astute very forthwith and uh, he's, he's right there so I, I don't want to say aggressive because he isn't but he's a little bit aggressive mr sam he's a lovely bloke he treats us all fairly equally he is the best you know driving force behind any band that you could ask for really if, if mr sam and the dead nuts were a train he'd be the track right like just keeping us going all the time, one stop to the next. He had a particular disdain to my eyes and he basically looked in them, dry heaved for some time and then said, please put sunglasses on at all times, you disgusting, ugly prick. And I took those words to heart. I won't remove these for the love of God <laughs> because he honestly will start dry heaving and it, was, it made me heave. I almost threw up entirely. I only just had some pasta and I, yeah, never again. So I've kept the sunglasses on um, and my pisshole eyes will remain behind them. You have to appreciate an artist's uh, vision. Not yours. Of course, not mine. It's very hard at night. So my hairstyle, I would, I would call just unmanageable. Unmanageable, if I'm honest with you. It's just whatever I can do. This, I'm just wearing this to just keep it in. Because honestly, without it, it's just got no rhyme or reason to it, if I'm honest with you. You know, like it's a bit like our lyrical content. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense. There's five different shampoos that I rotate in and out on a daily basis, all right? I've got Tresemme and then obviously all the salon products that I, I had to do sections of the hair because the back is a lot lighter than the front. So the back, I got the thicker globular-like shampoos. The fronts are a bit more strawberry. I got L'Oreal for kids. That's really good shit. Very sensitive on the skin because I get fucking insane rashes on my forehead. Just a whole can of own brand, shop brand hairspray. Bit, you need, and then it's just, just back brushing. Just a lot of back brushing. I try and wash it out sometimes, but I, do, I can't. It's, it's so ingrained into my hair fiber. I think it's in my DNA structure now. There's a little troll there. <laughs> it's cute, isn't he? I don't, 
I don't mean to be offensive, but... Yeah, go on. Don't you're be often, offensive. You're, you're often called a pocket troll. Right, well, that's quite offensive. Because of the hair. What, this glorious barnet. So this is not an easy thing to achieve. Basically, I grew my hair out for many, many millennia. And it got to this length. And I was like, that is the perfect length for troll hair. But I'm still offended that you called it troll hair. But that was the look I was going for. And then every night, basically what I do is I put as much hair product on it as I can find. Sometimes if I don't have hair product, I use anything. But anyway, then I sleep upside down like a bat hanging from the ceiling until it dries. I mean, all the blood rushes to my head. <laughs> I'm still fine. It doesn't make a difference to how I am. Uh, but the hair comes out brilliantly, you know, and that's how, that's how I achieve this hairstyle. And it dries like this and it's pretty much ready to go when I wake up. By an evening, sometimes it's drooping, but you know, I have a little power nap and then we're all ready to go again. Upside, upside down. Upside. Yeah, upside down. Sorry, did you want us to turn on the back in? Oh no. yeah, is it on? No, not yet. Oh. We'll whip it on for you. Thanks, mate. Yeah, the old auto-tune lip-sync thing. People are always saying, oh, you lip-syncing, are you using auto-tune? You don't seem like much of a singer. And I'd have to agree, I'm lip-syncing right now. This whole thing's pre-recorded. What, you think Big Nut auto-tunes, do you? No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. That's like straight out of his mouth. What are you trying to say? That's offensive. You can't say that. Oh, I'm just going to warm up a bit, guys. Hold on, I'm just going to sort of the first line. It's been a hard week working. Oh, hang up. I'll, I'll turn on the auto-tune. All right. It's been a hard week working. It's still a bit shit. He's got a beautiful voice of an angel. Well, he obviously puts it on and like strains it and distorts it to fit the aesthetic, but I've heard him sing opera before. Like the female opera, like really high octaves. You know, he's a genius. He's so good with lyrics. Like he just, it just comes out of his mouth. And honestly, I love anything that goes in and out of his mouth. Right, this one's uh, this one's called Secret Santa. Another one. And a lot of fans say that they don't really hear my accent because I've got this condition which essentially I like to call it singing south. I can't help but sing in a southern American accent. And it just goes there. It goes it's straight it goes there straight away and it doesn't leave until the end of the song and it's it's a bit unsettling, but honestly, I think it's helped me because I think that, that gives me a confidence uh, in the sound that I produce uh, that lets me say some of the, the very lewd and offensive things that I do say. It's, uh, it's, it's very helpful. Start from the top, start from the top, we can do it again. Yeah, I'll open this demon dick all the way Hot time, unicorn pants Aliens with tits? Why the fuck not? Now you see, that's a very lewd suggestion that aliens might have breasts. And of course, that's absolutely fine if they do have breasts, but in the song I'm being somewhat misogynistic, and that's, that's just the way we've written them, and I can't really get away from that, but you can see the tone there. I'm sure, as you're aware, there's been a lot of ongoing issues with sexual tension in the band. Um, for the longest time, I was afraid to take these guys out on tour. I didn't know what they would be doing. Like, even just in the practice rooms, it's pretty wild sometimes. Um, but I just recently found out about these things called cock rings. I just bought one for each of the guys in the band and it's made a world of difference. Everybody has a cock ring, even No Nuts, bless her. She uses it as a woggle, you know, like, 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 like beavers and scouts use, you know, the thing to keep the neckerchief on. Well, we've all got cock rings. Uh, I think that's to swell it up though, to look good. Um, but also to keep us kind of like at that level of arousal that's not too much where we start fucking uncontrollably. But uh, it's enough to like keep us playing, you know? Shame about No Nut and the... Uh, she can't wear it. We've got these now, right? So the lads, obviously, they wear theirs. I, I mean, I, so I, this is a symbol. You know, as long as you can see it on the outside, you know that everybody else is wearing theirs too. Like cardboard nut, what's this? Oh, it's, very, it's hurting quite What's going on here? Yeah, I've got, oh, I've, got... I, I, put, I think it's quite tight. I think it's smaller than before. What, the, what yeah. size ring did you go for? Well, I just went for the regular. You went regular, did you? Yeah. Oh, I went beef and onion, hulu, big old bugger. Now, we've all seen that there are some performers who love to wear a cock ring, and I, and I can see why. It feels quite liberating, and uh, I can feel quite powerful wearing one. However, it, it, it can be quite tight, and also you have to get quite aroused beforehand. Uh, now, once, 
we've smashed the glasses once the the, the cables have been strung around someone's neck you, you don't feel so aroused yes i think it's swollen i think i need to see a doctor so that's flaccid is it that's well i've chubbed it up a bit right Right, just slap a bit. And of course, yeah. There she is, he's ready. So I, I do find that quite hard. So it does look like we're just kind of slapping our chubbies around um, the studio. And it's, it's, not, it's not on, because we've now recently had a, uh, a, a female ad, ad, added to the band, which is great because she's providing the bass that the uh, lead singer is incapable of playing at the same time. Now, she wears hers like Frodo wears his ring, and I think that's commendable. Uh, because she has no other option. There's, I just don't think there is an alternative unless we're looking into much more, um, let's say, risque uh, territory, which we don't need to go into. I think it's like one of those things where they must have been at such a high level already that when you push them even higher, they sort of go back round to the bottom. So they're already at such a high sexual tension, just push them back round all the way down to the bottom. So they go on, and then we get these chastity cages we've got. Nightmare those things are. Big metal construction, pins on the inside, and they go around the shaft and the phallus, you know. And if anything starts getting too spicy, we all get stabbed in the dick. Problem solved, isn't it? If you're in the audience and you come to a dead nut show, you stand there, you wait for the lights to come up and the sound to happen, and we make them wait for it, usually because our set isn't long enough to fill the night. So we just make them wait. They're waiting, they're waiting. And then we come out, and then we've got to find our instruments and stuff, you know, plug them in, because we haven't done sound check, because we didn't know where the venue was most of the time. Uh, so we're doing that, we're setting up, there's like 15 minutes of that, you know, like kicking the drum and stuff. The crowd's still like, is we starting soon? And we're still like doing a sound check. We can't hear anything. And then, and then by the by the time we're ready to go, they're like, yeah, right, last song. And we're like, oh, all right. And then we'd normally just pick a song and play it. Uh, so it's, it's quite the experience. You'll never see that of any other band, which I think is unique. Honestly, if you're lucky enough to get a ticket, which you can, because there's just so many available right now. Um, but if you're there, it's, it's like a trip, honestly. Like I said with The Shaman, there's no drug out there that can fulfill you your full body and mind with what a dead nut can give you. I'm very excited about the tour coming up. We are doing four dates, I believe, um, and we are spanning as far as England. Uh, he, someone mentioned we may go to Scotland. Uh, we all raised our eyebrows at that one. And then Wales, which uh, quite frankly, I think he started dry heaving again. So we called that one off straight away. And we've basically got four dates in, in sunny Blighty. For me, this is this is the first like England tour I've done. I normally tour in and around like small villages, like Hampshire. I do like Warwickshire. I'm normally touring around pubs there. There's normally one or two spoons I like to frequent every now and again. They're normally pretty good. We have cordoned off the first four rows for a splash zone, um, and that's not just because of uh, Big Nut's uncontrollable bladder. It's because we like to spray when we sing, and that's just that's just the way of it. And sometimes. One of us may have to go, uh, it's normally involving piss, and I don't know why it's involving piss, but sometimes we have to fill bottles, and then we just throw them out on stage in, in, in passion, and, and kind of, they love it, they don't know what it is at the time. Uh, when someone says it stinks like piss, I'm like, that's the experience, I'm saying in my head, of course, I'm very zoned in on the, on the guitar. I'm not saying it to them personally, that wouldn't make any sense, they wouldn't hear me over everything else. The music will be loud, it'll be rocking, um, I'll be wailing the occasional loud synthy note. It'd be more in tune than that. And quite frankly, I think some people may get an audio orgasm. And that doesn't happen very often, but it can happen, uh, depending on the size of the venue uh, and the uh, volume of the bass, because it, it ricochets in there. You feel it everywhere. If you have a sensitivity, you may, in fact, have an orgasm watching us, which... That's the best experience you could possibly get. Okay, so some people seem to think that Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts are a bad influence to children, both musically and with the actions that we do off the stage. But I just want to encourage them to let their children see Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts live the Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts life at home. They can do that by buying merch sometimes. So like we have stuff like this, so kids can buy this and wear it and remember that you're a rock star wherever you are. Yeah, some people say we push merch too hard. I don't think we push merch too hard at all. But it is available. <laughs>
It is available on Fresh Merch, yes, that's right. It's more than a band, it's a way of life, and kids need to learn about life. And if they don't learn about life, one day they will learn about life, and they wish that they had learned about life when they should have learned about life. From Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts. Is there anything safe for children these days? People say, oh, the lyrics aren't suitable for children. Yeah, well, well, I'm not a child. What, what could they teach me about life at school where you learn about useful skills? You don't need skills to get on in life, you just need life knowledge to know about life. In small increments, you have to let them listen to our music and then they begin to understand. You know, you can't give it to them all at once. It'll just overwhelm them. It's not right to give such young, fresh, not feeble, fresh minds, you know, the glory of Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts. That was just unhealthy. It's unhealthy for a growing mind. You need to slowly expose them. Mm. There's been a lot of news reports of children stealing their parents' credit cards just because they feel compelled to buy merchandise because you push it mm. so hard. What do you have to say about that? You say it as if there's something wrong with kids stealing their parents' credit cards to buy merch from Mr. Sam and the Dead Nuts. Is that the understanding that I'm getting from you? Well, I don't see what is wrong with it, so I can't really comment on that. Well, theft is wrong. Theft, well, it's, if it's from your parents, like they owe you, don't they? You didn't ask to be brought into this world. They brought you into this world. And what? They're not going to buy you a t-shirt from your favourite band. Steal that credit card. Go on to Fresh Merch and buy the t-shirt, you know? Uh, dead nuts, nutters, if you're out there. Uh, leave me alone, because honestly, uh, I have a court martial right now. So you can't actually come within, I think, a mile of me, because I'm considered violent or whatever. So uh, stay at home. Send me some letters, maybe. No more anthrax, if you could, because that put me out for a couple weeks. But uh, come to the tours. Don't spit on me again. Uh, I know I'm at that level. Come, come to the show. It'll be a good time. We're playing Birmingham, Manchester, fucking London. Can you believe it? We're playing fucking London. It's huge. It's a huge city. What's the other one? There's another one in there somewhere. It's gone. We are assured that the majority of the globe are Dead Nuts fans. And we'd love to see you at one of our gigs. We want to see you in that crowd, rocking out to some questionable songs. Don't forget to bring your parents' credit cards and we're going to have loads of merch on sale. If you haven't already got your tickets, they're still available to buy. Um, we just want to see as many of you there so we can make as much money as possible. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That's enough, is it? Honestly, uh, could we swap this guy because he called me short? Thank you.